Our modern economy generates a lot of waste that ends up in landfill. The good news is that many businesses are finding ways to turn waste into new products. As you'll see in this week's segment, finding a new use for that waste can often save a business money and it can also generate income streams. I visited the Melbourne company Close the Loop to find out how they're turning waste oils and printer cartridge waste into road covering. And here in Sydney, I visited CSR Bradford to find out how they're turning old windscreens, window glass and glass bottles into insulation. We start this report with CSR Bradford. Anthony Tannis, welcome to Smart Money. Here at CSR Bradford, you're using waste glass and turning it into insulation products. What kind of glass are you using for that? Well, John, we can pretty much use any type of glass in the manufacture of glass. We'll, um, we use bottle glass, uh, plate glass that's used in window manufacturing, as well as old disused windscreens. The only type of glass that we can't use is heat resistant glass, such as Pyrex. You've been doing this for some years now. What kind of research and development did it take to come up with this method of recycling waste glass? CSR Bradford has been manufacturing glass wool since 1934. Back in those days we were using slag wool waste product from the steel industry to manufacture insulation. In the early 70s we started manufacturing glass wool. A lot of our technology comes from East of St Gabain and for them and for us it was just a natural thing to use recycled glass instead of having to manufacture glass from sand and basic virgin materials we were able to melt glass and use that in our process. Now you mentioned their virgin raw materials. Is there a financial benefit, an energy saving benefit from using recycled glass instead of using virgin raw materials? Yes there is John. The energy required to melt sand is considerably higher than that of um, just having to melt glass. So for us it makes a lot of sense to, to get recycled glass that's destined to, the, to go into landfill to put in our process. How many tonnes of recycled glass do you use every year and where does that come from? Without giving you too much information, we roughly use between 25,000 and 30,000 tonnes of crushed glass or recycled glass each year. We work closely with a local recycler, Campbelltown Recyclers. They source all their product, bottled glass and plate glass, crush it, make sure it has no contaminants and supply it to us. At your recycling facility, how do you turn waste glass in, into a high quality product? The glass is fed into a furnace that's operating about 1300 degrees. The molten glass is then poured into a spinner. Now, I know that sounds a bit complex, but if you ever have a look at the manufacturing of fairy floss, um, molten sugar is fed into a spinning wheel. It's got roughly about a thousand holes in it. The centrifugal force forces the glass through those holes, forming strands. The strands have binder applied to them, goes through the oven, that's cured, then cut to size. Each one of those bats that we produce has about 85% recycled material. There's often a perception that if a product has recycled content, it's somehow inferior quality-wise. But with your product, that's not the case, is it? No, that's not the case at all, John. The products we manufacture, whether we're using virgin material or recycled material, the product quality is identical. And finally, for companies who are thinking about using recycled materials in their products, what advice would you give them? Don't be afraid of using recycled material. Work closely with your supplier as we do. Um, ensure you don't have contaminants in the raw material stock that you're looking for and the finished product should be as good as using virgin material. Utilising the benefits of discarded waste is working for CSR Bradford and it's also working for Close the Loop in Victoria. I met up with Nera de Mortlock to find out how they're using waste oil and toner cartridges in the manufacture of new products for our roads. You're very well known as a company for collecting millions of printer cartridges and recycling them. The plastic in those cartridges is easy to recycle, but the toner is less easy. What was the thinking that led to you turning that toner waste into high quality asphalt road covering? Closer Loop's mantra is zero waste to landfill. So after 13 years of innovation, we've finally been able to get rid of what has been deemed as a waste product. So toner is then modified as a modified toner polymer and put into toner pack. It's a fantastic solution of a normal product that is deemed a waste that everyone particularly burns instead of reusing. You've partnered with Downer Group to turn that toner waste into asphalt road covering. For people who think that recycle content affects the quality of that road covering, what's your answer to that? It's better. It's better. There's a misconception that waste isn't as good as the virgin polymers. It is. Downer Group is your partner in this project, selling this to councils and other people who used it for road covering. 
What's the commercial benefit for them? Are they the only ones selling this? They are. That gives them the competitive edge in the marketplace whereby they have a low carbon footprint product, an environmentally friendly product, and it allows them to gain more traction within the local councils. In addition to using toner waste, what other waste ingredients have you been able to use in making this road covering? MTP, or toner waste, is a patent and product. So I can't tell you everything that's in it, but I can actually say that there are waste oils in there. And there's also ground tire rubber that goes into a part of these. So we try and use as many recycled components as what we can to create the best product possible. When it comes to road coverings, councils are, are a key customer in that marketplace. Have you had much interest from councils? So we've had over 15 different councils across Australia buy this product so far. The City of Sydney uh, laid a large amount of road late last year and they had fantastic results from it. How important was it for you to find a partner like Downer to, to get into this market? It was incredibly important. We can create the product, but we need someone to lay the roads and that's where Downer and the synergies that we have aligned became the integral partnership. How many tonnes of cartridge waste and waste oil have you been able to use in this road covering? So far we've laid 145,000 tonnes of toner pave. So this is the equivalent to a Sydney to Newcastle return trip or nine million cartridges have gone into this as well. In addition to selling this product in Australia, what kind of interest have you had from overseas? Late last year, we did our first car park in the US, in Kentucky, and they gained fantastic traction from that. And we've already had interest into the European market so far. So we want to try and really drive this hard overseas as well as here. This is a very clever idea that you've come up with. What's the potential to license this overseas? Huge. This is what we're aiming for and this is one of the driving factors why we wanted to get it right here. We wanted to push forward overseas and we've had a lot of our OEM partners be very interested in getting this traction overseas as well. So it's encouraging that they want it just as much as what we want it. As you just saw, both Close the Loop and CSR Bradford are taking full business advantage of using waste materials as a resource. In looking at how they did this, I found three key things that other businesses can learn from. First up, if you're throwing away a lot of high quality material, instead of paying waste fees, you might be able to sell or give away your waste to a company who could use it in new products. Secondly, if you're a manufacturer, could you be like CSR Bradford and use recycled materials in your production processes? Glass is just one of the many materials that can be reprocessed into many different uses. Finally, it often pays to work with other companies on creating new ideas and opportunities. By working with Downer EDI, Close the Loop were able to come up with an innovative and more environmental way of making road covering. Smart Money's case studies have been developed with assistance from the New South Wales Office of Environment and Heritage and Sustainability Victoria.